You won't believe how easy it is to create a hotel booking form on WordPress. Let me show you on this video right now. Welcome to Job Form. My name is George, and on this video, I'm going to show you how to create a hotel booking form. Now, the idea of using a hotel booking form on WordPress is because WordPress is a really flexible website builder. We can install plugins, themes, and it lets us customize our website to a whole new level. And on this video, what we have to do is first create our hotel booking form so we can add it to WordPress. And the beauty about this is that this is going to be customizable on JotForm and it's going to reflect on our website when it's live. So let's get started. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to recommend to you is to get started with a hotel booking template. We have several available booking templates that you can start using right now and customize it to your own needs. We can add our logos, colors, and it's really easy to customize. Let me show you a few of these templates that we can use right now, but there's over 40 templates available as of this video and growing. Let me show you this one. For example, this is a hotel booking form that we can go ahead and preview it. We can go ahead and test it from here. For example, we can add our name, which is George Aguilar, add our email and just go ahead and test out all the elements that this form has available in case we want to use it. So we can go ahead and test it out, fill it out, submit it and see if this is the right fit for our own hotel. So if I like this template, I can go ahead and use it or I can go ahead and preview other templates that are available. So again, I can go ahead and preview this one, see if it already has the elements that I need for my hotel booking. And it's going to save me a lot of time when I need to build my own hotel booking form. So in this case, for example, if I like this one, I can go ahead and use the template. But in this case, I kind of like more the vibe and the colors for this one. So let's go ahead and use this template and you'll see that it's going to open up our job form builder and we'll be set to go to customize it. So let's go ahead and get started. For example, if I go ahead and select any of these elements, I can click on the gear button and it's going to open up the properties on the right. I can customize every single aspect of this form. I can even get rid of this section in case I don't want to use it on my hotel booking form. But in this case, I do want to use it and I have the option to edit every single aspect of this. For example, maybe I don't want to mention hotel again. I just want to mention booking. Maybe on my website, I already mentioned too many times hotel. So I'll just keep, on, keep booking in this section. I can edit the subtext. I can make the heading size larger. For example, right now it's small, but I can make it larger. I'll keep it small for the heading. Text alignment, I can keep it center. I can move it left, right. And it's going to depend the form that I'm building and why I need to move the alignment. And then I have my heading image. So in this case, it's a one image for the whole section. I can go ahead and remove it and I can choose another image from my own desktop. I can use an image from a previous upload or I can enter a URL if I have a link to an image that I want to use. But in this case, I'll just hit Command C and I'll bring back the image that it's available there, right? Now, each one of these elements can be removed or configured depending on your needs. Take, for example, the name field. Maybe we need to customize, so we click on properties and maybe we want to make this required. They cannot skip this field unless they fill out the name. So we'll make it required. And what if we want to ask for the middle name? Well, let's go into options. And in options, we can enable middle name, we can enable prefix, we can enable surfix, and it's up to us what we want to add or not. In this case, let me go ahead and remove this and we'll keep it with the middle name. So it's just a quick example of how customizable this is. Even though we are using a template, we can go into advanced section, we can change the placeholders, the hover text, so we can give them a hint of what should be filled out. In this case, it's pretty much straightforward with the name. Maybe it's a field that people might doubt what it's about, so we can use the hover text. We can make a read only, shrink it, or hide field, right? So that's for the settings for this. Now, in this particular template, we are asking for the email, the room type. In this case, we can go ahead and click on the drop down. Here we go. And we can modify each one of these aspects from here. Now, depending on our hotel needs, we can go ahead and change these or keep them as they are. But if I want to change that, I can do it straight from here or I can go into properties and change other aspects of this particular element. So we got their general. We got our options here. Then again, we can change the width, the options. We can change them from here to the predefined options, the default values, calculated values in case we want to calculate, for example, with conditional logic, this will help us out and the advanced options for this field. For example, multiple selections. Do we want to allow that? In this case, um, there's only going to be one room type when they select it, so we're not going to allow it. 
But if we need to allow for specific reasons, multiple selections, we can enable this. OK, the visible options again, Hubbard text and the rest of the options. And then we have the number of guests option. We, we're going to leave that one as is. And the next field is the arrival date and time. Now, this one is the date picker properties. In case you are building one from scratch, we can find that element here in elements widgets and we are going to search for date picker and here it is right in case you are building from scratch and not using a template and again we have all the available settings particular to this specific element for example we have the label the sub labels we have the options for this the date format so depending on the country that you are in this might vary for example it's asking for month date and year which is uh, commonly used in north america but what if you are using this, uh, take, for example, Mexico or other countries where it's a date month year, we can go ahead and change it from here. The default date could be custom, none or the current, which is today. Calendar pop up the light mode, validate light mode date and the months available here. You can go ahead and modify these if you like the days and all the options available there. Then we have the time options so we can make this a time field the time format 24 hours or a.m. p.m. and default time is the current. Then you have limits. Do you want to use age verification? Just go ahead and turn this on and set the minimum age, the past or future. Are they able to book in the past? So in this case, we are going to disable this one. So, for example, if someone selects a date, they can only select a date in the future. They can't select a date in the past. So someone is not going to arrive on a past date. Take, for example, OK? So we can go ahead and turn that off days of the week. We can turn off days of the week that they can't select in case, for example, um, you are not booking on Sundays or Mondays, et cetera, for some specific reason. You can do so there. And we have start and date, which would not be something useful for a booking uh, form, but that is available there. Disable specific dates. This one is a really important one. In case you want to manually book certain dates, you can turn these off by adding the dates. For example, if you want to manually book because you are going to raise the prices on Christmas, New Year, Thanksgiving, etc., we can add the dates right here and disable date ranges if it's going to be a date range. Once you're good to go, go into advanced and we have our options for advanced. So it's really easy to customize the date picker properties. The next element is the departure date. So again, we have our properties for that one. And we can go ahead and change everything from here. And again, you can have your required option here, your date format in case you want to change it, the year from, year to, and several available options there. Now, what if we want to add elements to this? It is possible. You can customize every single aspect of this form, even colors, etc. So right now we are going to add an element. Let's just say that we are going to ask for the passport number. Now, some countries will make this a required field because they are going to ask for the passport. So maybe you want to add that there. How about we add a short text to this section and let's go ahead and shrink the past one. It's already shrink. There we go. It's going to shrink this one. It's going to advance, shrink it. OK, and we are going to ask for the passport number. And it's just a quick example of how easy it is to change the elements and start working with them right here. So we can make this required in case it's a required um, option in the country that you want to use this booking form. The options, you can use the validate here, alphanumeric, alphabetic, currency, Syrica. in this case, it's going to be alpha numeric for the passport field, for example. Now, something I want to show you on this form is that it has conditional logic and how you can actually do it on your own booking form. For example, if they want free pickup from the airport, this is going to enable it to ask the flight number. Now you can see that this element is hidden. How can you do that? Well, we'll go into properties. We'll go into advanced and we will enable hidden. That means that this field will not pop up unless they select. Yes, please pick me up on arrival, right? If you select no, that will remain hidden. Now, how is that done? Well, we'll go into settings and in settings, we'll go into conditions and you can see that here's the condition that's built. Let's go into the pencil here and this is conditional logic. So that means that if something happens, it's going to do this. So in this case, for the question free pickup, you go ahead and select it. The state, if it's equal to and you select the value, yes, please. What is it going to do? Well, it's going to show this particular field, which is the flight number. It's really easy to enable conditional logic in this case. Now, let me show you how that works so you understand. OK, now here's here we go. Here's our booking form. You go ahead and fill it out. In this case, we yes, we do want to pick up on arrival. 
See here, it now enables us to add the flight number. If you select no, it's going to remain hidden. So it's a really useful feature depending on the elements that you add in your form. Now, in terms of customization of the look of the colors and fonts, it's super easy to customize. If we click on the form designer, we have several available options. You can select a color scheme that's already available there. You can change page color, form color, the font color, everything from here. Just go ahead and select it. For example, let's just say that for your hotel booking, we want to use some blue here. You can go ahead and select it from here. Change the color there. there we go. It's going to really highlight your booking form. There's also styles available here. We can change the form width, the label alignment. You can change the question spacing, just a lot of customization. You can even use CSS to really customize your form, right? And there's also themes available in case you want to use one that's already pre-built. If you don't like the one that's available now and the layout of the form, if you want to change it to card style. So it's super easy to use the form designer to customize your form. Now, how about a payment gateway? Can we actually charge for the booking straight from our hotel booking form? Yes, it is possible to do that. We're going to go into the elements and there's a tab that says payments. Let's go ahead and select it. And there's several payment gateways available here, all the way from PayPal, Square, Afterpay, Clearpay, PayU, uh, several of these payment gateways. So depending on your country or the payment gateway that you want to enable, just go ahead and drag it inside of here. In this case, let me go ahead and drag this one, which is a really quick ad for a payment gateway which is PayPal personal, and I'm going to add it all the way to the end. Okay. So once I've added here, I can go ahead and enable it by adding my details for PayPal. All I have to do is add my email account, depending on the payment gateway that you had, you will need to add the credentials, API keys, etc., to enable it. In this case, let me just type in test test.com, select the currency that you want to charge. There's the payment style. If it's going to be a product, a subscription, user defined amount or collect a donation. In this case, we are going to sell a product. So let's go ahead and continue and we can add our products right here, which would be, I would add these by night, but depending on your use case and how you want to charge is how you're going to structure this. So for example, I'll just say one night. Here we go. The price is going to be $100 description, one hotel night. Here we go. I can choose an image. I can select from an image on my, uh, image that I've uploaded previously. I'll just go ahead and select that one for testing purposes. Auto scale the image. We can make this required select by default. Then we have our options for this. Do we want to add a quantity selector? So I can say per night, it's going to be a drop down quality and we're going to allow up to 10 nights. For example, here we go. Let's save the quantity. Here we go. Do we want to add a stock to this? We can do so here and we're going to be good to go. We can also set, for example, weekdays, holidays and charge differently for those. So now it's going to be $100 for each night that they select here. Let me give you a preview of this form. So if I go to preview, we have our selector here. We're going to select one night. I can make a default selection to be selected by default. So these can't skip this and select the number of nights that, that nights that they're going to stay. For example, six nights, or I can use conditional logic from the arrival date to departure date and automatically set the nights here. So that is possible. Okay. Now, once you're good to go, you have your form built, you have the elements that you want, the colors that you like, everything's good to go. We're going to go into publish and we can go ahead and share this from a link, a QR code or by email. But in this case, we want to add it to our WordPress website. Okay. So we're going to go into embed and we have two options. We can use the embed code or we can use the WordPress code. So in this case, I'm going to use the embed code. I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to go over to my WordPress website. Now, in this case, we can add it to any section of our web WordPress site. So I'm going to go into pages. I'm going to create a brand new page to show you how to add this on Gutenberg blocks. And I'm also going to show you how to add it on Brizzy. Okay. So in this case, let's just say I'm going to name this hotel booking. We're going to pretend that we have a nice looking website and we are going to add the booking form. Okay. So in blocks, we're going to click on the plus button and we're going to search for HTML and we're going to select it. Here we go. And we're going to add the code that we just copied over there on job form. So let's hit publish. Let's preview our form. Here we go. And we now have our hotel booking form here on WordPress. Now be aware that if we modify our 
booking form on job form is going to automatically update on our website so we don't have to come back every single time and make modifications so that's a really neat feature okay now how do we add this on Brizzy? So in this case, let me show you how to do this on the contact section. And I'm going to click on edit with Brizzy. There we go. And we have our booking form here. We're going to go down here and it says book with us. So this is the section where I want to add the hotel booking form. So we'll click on the plus button and on Brizzy, we're going to search for code. Here we go. We're going to add the short code to this section. Let's click on the WordPress icon here. Let's paste our code. Let's update this. Let's go ahead and preview this. And here we go. We have our hotel booking form here on WordPress. You saw how easy it is. So it's going to be able to be embedded on any type of theme or straight to WordPress Gutenberg. So it's really flexible, highly customizable. And again, as I mentioned, any modification that you make on your form will be automatically reflected on your website. So no need to jump into the back end of WordPress to make changes. All you have to do is make your changes from here. So I hope you like this video. Please let us know here in the comments what you think about these booking forms. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell notification to get notified when new videos come out. And that's a wrap.